how y'all doing? It's old Judd again. I got you another story today. This is about Joseph. Now, this one right here is a pretty long one, so y'all gonna have to listen fast. That's what my preacher always said. He, he wild and crazy. I think a lot of you. So anyway, here goes. Here's Joseph. All right, now his daddy was Jacob. All right, Jacob was the one I told you about uh, wrestling with that angel, and that angel named him Israel. Well, it just so happens that Israel has 12 tribes, and uh, Jacob, a.k.a. Israel, had 12 sons, and that's the same name. It ain't, a, it ain't a coincidence. That's just how it's supposed to be. So anyway, old Joseph. He's Jacob's favorite. Well, that his brother, they did not like that one bit. They made him mad. They didn't like old Jacob or Joseph. So, uh, well, he'd have these dreams and stuff, and he'd dream about how uh, had these sheaves and this stuff, the eleven of them and the eleven stars, just different stuff. They'd all bowing down to him, and he'd tell him his brother, and they say, "Oh yeah, we think we, you think we gonna bow down to you? <laughs> no sir." Well, they didn't like him even more. Well, then his daddy made him a coat of many colors. Just like Dolly Parton's mom made her, I bet. And uh, probably where Jacob uh, got the idea from. Anyway, old Joseph, his brother don't like him. They was out uh, tending to the sheep, goats, and stuff. And Jacob, his daddy, he said, Joseph, I need you to go find your brother. He said, all right, I'll do it. So he took off, and they was long out there. Well, they seen him coming. And they said, I don't know what we're going to do to old Joseph. We're going to kill him. So the oldest brother, he said, I don't think we ought to kill him. I know we ought to do it. Let's just throw him in his pit over here. So they said, all right, I reckon. So they throwed him in his pit. Well, they were sitting there eating lunch and said, well, here come these slave traders. Well, them slave traders, they said, I know what we'll do. We'll sell him to the slave traders. Then we'll make some money off of it. So that's what they did. Well, they took his coat of many colors. They ripped it up, put goat's blood all over it, stuff like that. And took it back to daddy said, you all seen it. He was wild. Here he was, something jumped out of the bushes, ripped him all shred and killed him. We don't know what it was, chip or cobra or something like that. We don't know what he was. He was wild. And he said, oh, Lord, I lost my favorite son. Well, here's what happened with Joseph, because that wasn't what happened. The slave traders, they sold him to, uh, took him to Egypt, sold him to this fellow named Potiphar. Well, Potiphar, he was the uh, Pharaoh's head military guy, all right? So uh, Potiphar, he liked Joseph. He liked him a lot. He get him head of his house, head of his yard and gardens, and head of everything. Well, old Potiphar's like wife, she liked Joseph too, and she say, "Ooh, hello, Joseph. Won't you come over here and let's do a little hanky panky?" And he said, "No, ma'am." He said, "I like old Potiphar. He'd give me a good job. I wouldn't do something like that." And and God don't want me to do that anyway. Well, she kept on and kept on coming after him. Well, one day she said. Joseph, come over here and let me run on your leg there a little bit. Well, he took off running, left his left his shirt or something. She, he ripped right out of his shirt trying to get away from her. Well, here she goes. Oh, Lord, y'all got to help me. He's trying to get me and do dirty things to me. Well, she was lying. Well, old Potiphar, he throwed him in jail. Here he goes to prison. While he's in prison, he ended up running in, or he was in a, a cell right next to um the butler and the baker to the pharaoh. Well, they had this dream. Both of them in the same night had a dream. Well, old butler, he said, man, that's got me worried. Dead. I don't know what to think about this. Well, Joseph said, well, I know about dreams. God tells me what dreams are. You tell me, I'll tell you what it means. So he did. He told him his dream, and uh, he said, yeah, I know what that means. He said, that means in three days uh, that pharaoh's going to come get you out of jail and you're going to go right back to being the head butler, and everything's going to be just fine. And he said, well, that sounds all right. Well, that baker heard it, and that baker said, well, you are. He said, I had me a dream, too. I want to hear what, it, what my dream was. He told him his dream. Now, if you want to read, it's in about Genesis 40. So he said, uh, he told him his dream, and Joseph said, yeah, I know what that means. That means in three days, old Pharaoh, he's going to come get you, too, and he's going to hang you and kill you, and the birds are going to eat your flesh. And a, but a baker, he did not like that. So, three days, here come that Pharaoh. He got both of them out of jail. Now, when Joseph told the old butler, he said, now, when you get out of jail, he said, you remember me. He said, because I ain't supposed to be in here. You tell that Pharaoh let me out of here. He said, oh, sure, I'll do that. He didn't. He forgot all about him. Well, two years later, the old uh, Pharaoh, he had a couple of dreams. I'll tell you them dreams in a minute. But he had a couple of dreams. And that butler, he finally said, hmm, oh, yeah, I know a feller that can interpret dreams. He was in prison. 
we ought to go get him out. And the Pharaoh said, well, yeah, go get him. Well, Pharaoh told him his dream. Now, the first dream, it was about uh, these uh, big old he healthy cows come out of the Nile River. There was probably some nice Holsteins or maybe maybe even some Angus, uh, but might have been one of them uh, what, belted gallows. You know the ones that's got black on the end and white in the middle look like a big old giant Oreo? <laughs> I like them. They're funny looking. Anyway, there was uh, seven of them and then seven little skinny cows come out of the river. Well, they come up and the little skinny cows come over them big cows and ate them. And that pharaoh said, man, it's crazy. He had him all messed up in his head. He was like, man, this is a crazy dream. He didn't know if it was real or not. It was wild. Well, he had another dream. Kind of like the same thing, but it was big old healthy grains and skinny grains, skinny grains, ate the healthy grains. Stuff. But anyway, so old Joseph, he said, yep. Yeah. He said, I know what that means. Old God told me what that means is we're going to have seven years of real good uh, growth in the, on the, uh, the farms and stuff like that. And then in seven years after that, it's going to be bad and people are going to starve. So he said, man, he said, I know we need, we need to get somebody. Uh, Joseph told him, said, you need to get somebody to save up all the good stuff during the seven good years. That way you'll have some for the seven bad years. And that Pharaoh said, boy, that's a good idea. Hmm, who should we get to do that? I know, let's get Joseph to do it. So that's what happened. So now, that ain't Pharaoh, he even said, Joseph, he said, you are going to be the head man. The only person that's going to be below or above you is going to be me. So old Joseph, boy, he had a lot of power and stuff. Well, seven years went by, and they stored up all the grain. Well, then that famine started coming. About two years in that famine, people was running out. People all over the place. They was having to come to all the cities of Egypt just try to get stuff. Well, here come old Jacob and his 11 brothers that sold Joseph into slavery. And Jacob, he told him, he said, y'all going to have to go get us some food. We about to starve to death out here. So he sent them boys into Egypt. Here, old Joseph, he recognized them. All his brothers sent every one of them except for Benjamin, which was the youngest. So they said, old Joseph recognized them. And he said, y'all are spies. Y'all come to get all our stuff. And they said, no, we wouldn't do such a thing. And guess what they were doing? They were bowing down to him, just like he dreamed about in the beginning. So anyway, he said, I tell you what, to prove you ain't no spies, you need to go back home and bring your brother Benjamin, and then I'll believe you. So he kept all of them except for one. Well, then in three days, he changed his mind, and he let all of them go except for one. So he kept one brother in prison. He said, y'all better bring old Benjamin back. Y'all ain't getting your brother back. I got him. Well, in about... And a little while later, they finally run out of food. And the daddy said, y'all going to have to go back and get some food? And he said, we're going to have to take Benjamin. He said, I can't let you take Benjamin. You done took uh, Joseph away from me. Let him get killed. I can't let you let Benjamin get killed. So finally, they just had to do it. So they brought Benjamin back. Well, here's what he did. He, got, uh, he sent them all back away with Benjamin. He didn't want to tell them who he was. So he put a cup in Benjamin's bag, and then he had his guards go run after him after they was on their way home. Well, they said, I told you all a bunch of spies. Y'all trying to steal from me. And they said, oh, no, we wouldn't do that. He said, yeah, you would. Well, finally, he just broke down. He said, I can't do it. Take it no more. I took all I could took. And he said, I'm your brother, Joseph. And they said, what? Well, that scared them because they said, we done sold him into slavery and everything. He's going to kill us. He said, no, 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 I ain't going to kill you. He said, man, if it wasn't for y'all doing all that, then God wouldn't have had me been here at Potiphar's house and put me in jail and then put me in the Pharaoh. And see, if you think about it, if, the, if they hadn't sold him into slavery, he wouldn't have been able to save every bit of Egypt because he, would, he was the one that told them to store all the food. So every one of them would have died. Now, here's a little uh, story behind the story. Oh, uh, Joseph... His great-great-granddaddy was Abraham, and Abraham was the one that God promised he'd be the, the father of many nations. Well, if Joseph hadn't saved all the food up, then every one of them would have died, and all that prophecy would have been over. So it was all God's plan and the whole deal. Anyway, all right, so back to the story. So finally, he tells them who he is. He said, look, y'all going to have to bring your daddy and your cousins and brothers and sisters. Everybody's going to have to come back because... We only two years into this famine. We got about five more years left. So he went. Pharaoh said, yep, do whatever you got to do. I think a lot of you. I trust you. So they went back, 
got Jacob, got all the brothers, wives, and kids, and there's a bunch of, about 70 of them, there's a whole bunch of them. They all come back, and uh, they let them live right outside of Egypt, took care of everybody, and they all lived happily ever after. And that's it. If you want to read it, it starts about Genesis 37. It goes on up into the 40s, Genesis 42 and 43. It's a pretty long story about Joseph, but it's a good one. And I think y'all to read it. Y'all check into it. And uh, that's all I got for today. See y'all.